What's up guys? I want to talk about this 3D model that I made, um, <clears throat> specifically Mercury's retrograde motion and possible transits of the Sun. Now Venus, all the planets display retrograde motions, but Mercury and Venus display retrograde motions with relate with respect to the Sun. Okay, so what do, what do I mean by retrograde motion? I'll provide a link that shows all the planets doing the retrograde motions. Now what retrograde means is to move backwards, basically. So when we look up in the sky, we see, you know, for instance, Mars goes forward and then it appears to stop and goes backwards a little bit and then goes forward again and then it appears to stop and then goes backwards a little bit and then goes forward again and appears to stop, goes backwards and goes forward. So what it's doing is it's drawing like a like a flower around the North Pole. And I'll provide a link to how that works. Now all the planets except for Mercury and Venus do this. So Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, they all they all do this. But Mercury and Venus, these two wandering stars they do something peculiar. Now, in this 3D model, I depict the retrograde motion of Mercury, but you have to pay close attention, and it, it wasn't, you couldn't really see it, so I'm zooming in here so we can see it uh, more clearly. Now, if you pay attention to Mercury going around the Sun, what it's going to do is it's going to perform its retrograde motion around the Sun, basically, but I don't believe it's actually going around the Sun. Um, or it might be going around it, but it's more like a more like how a, an atom would look going around neutrons, like drawing an X around it, all kinds of crazy. Because sometimes you'll have a retrograde motion, you'll have a transit of Mercury going across the top, and sometimes Mercury goes across diagonal, and then it comes across diagonal the other way, so it's like, well, what the hell? So that, that doesn't make any sense on the heliocentric model. But in a geocentric plane right here, what, what I mean by retrograde motion is, see how Mercury is slightly to the left over here? Everything is going to move clockwise, above looking down. Below looking up, it'd be counterclockwise, uh, east to west. But from here, it's above looking down east to west so this is the east coast of the United States that's the west coast so everything's gonna rise in the east and set in the west so it's all moving clockwise um, now since the Sun is moving clockwise mercury will slowly lag further and further behind the Sun and then it'll catch back up to the Sun go in front of it and then lag behind now you would think the time it takes to do these would be the same but it's not <clears throat> Since everything's moving clockwise, Mercury has to kind of climb uphill to go to for its retrograde motion to climb clockwise to catch up to it. Um, and then when it goes counterclockwise, it, it kind of goes really fast because it's kind of like a downhill motion. So what you'll notice in this model, if you pay attention to Mercury and the Sun, is Mercury will slowly lag behind the Sun and it'll stop at about 0, 1, 2 hours. It never goes really further than 2.5 hours back and any further than 2.5 hours forward. But you'll notice it as it's going around. You'll notice Mercury lag behind about two and a half hours and then go forward about two and a half hours and then lag behind. And that's the retrograde motion of Mercury. So let's pay attention to Mercury. Uh, Venus also displays a retrograde motion, but um, Mercury's retrograde motion is, takes 88 days, while Venus is a lot longer than that. Um, and so I'll make another video just explaining Venus's retrograde motion. Um, and the other planet's retrograde motion is pretty simple to understand. So notice how how Mercury is really far behind the sun right now. It's it's about you know it's about two hours behind the sun right now. Um, that's about as far as it's going to get. Now this isn't an accurate representation of time. See, I, I squeezed these all into forty five frames so you could see the retrograde motion of Mercury. I made every six hours a day basically uh, with relation to the moon. And so everything's just slightly moving faster to catch up, but towards the end, it's it's not an accurate representation of time, uh, with relation to photographs you can take at the end of time, uh, at the end of the twenty. It's about two twenty-eight day cycles because the moon route goes backwards um, compared to the sun about twice. So that's about two lunar cycles. So watch how Mercury it lags behind the sun here, and now it's going to begin its retrograde motion, and it's going to start catching back up to the sun. Now the peculiar part is this retrograde motion, <clears throat> where it catches back up with the sun, takes a little over two months, while the normal motion of it going backwards behind the sun happens in just under two weeks. So we can understand this, but see how I caught back up with the sun? And every time I move the mouse, it kind of makes it lag a little bit, so you just have to pay attention to Mercury. Now it passed up the sun, and it's going in front of the sun. 
and I've only got 45 frames here, so <clears throat> it'll start over once it hits 45, so I'm just going to pause it right at 45. Boom, then everything starts over. So what I want to show you now is um, <clears throat> I'm going to move it four frames ahead, and we're just going to see how everything moves with relation to the sun. So see how Mercury goes back just a little bit. Oh, whoops. I went too far. Let's go back to that. All right. Now Mercury moves a little farther behind that. And now it's moving a little bit further. One, two, three, four. Moves a little further back. One, two, three, four. And now it starts getting closer. It starts catching back up to the sun. So this is a retrograde motion right here. And this is a little easier way to understand it. It's catching back up with the sun, and then it's going to end up surpassing the sun. So now it's caught back up with the sun, and now it's going to pass up the sun. And that's the retrograde motions of Mercury with relation to the sun. Now Venus also displays retrograde motions, but it's a little, it's a little more complicated. And then we start it back over. See how Mercury started here, it whipped back, and it went forward, and whipped back, and went forward. And so that's what I just wanted to focus on, the retrograde motions of Mercury. And also, what I want to look at here is, with this one, what I did is I have Mercury a lot higher um, than the Sun. But what, what ends up happening is, <clears throat> Mercury ends up transiting the Sun. So I think what's happening is as it's going in front of it and behind it and in front of it and behind it, the heliocentric model says it's going perfect circle around it, right, in an elliptical orbit. <clears throat> but in this model, we see transits of it coming at this angle, coming perfectly across, coming at an upward angle. I mean, it's just all kinds of crazy things that doesn't make sense on a heliocentric model. And so I'm still working on figuring out how this works exactly. But Mercury, Mercury's uh, retrograde or transits are a lot more common than, say, Venus's, uh, Venus's transits.